everyone, welcome back to the Millennial Cruiser channel. Today's video is going to be all about the rookie mistakes that Brandon and I made on our very first cruise together back in 2016. And I'm going to do this in the form of a story time so you guys can get the full idea of what happened. And at the end, I will tell you guys my tips for avoiding the mistakes that we made. So without further ado, let's get into the story. So this happened in 2016, like I said, on Oasis of the Seas. Brandon and I had never been on an adult vacation together before. We had never done a vacation on our own. Uh, he had been on a few Royal Caribbean cruises before, uh, and I had been on one carnival cruise, but we had never ventured off on our own, and we had never planned a full vacation by ourselves before, so this was a totally new experience. We had both been dying to go on an Oasis-class ship on Royal Caribbean. If you don't know, they're their largest ships, and we had been dreaming of going on these ships for a good two years. This was a, a couple of years into dating, so uh, we had looked into it for a very long time and finally decided to do an eight-day Eastern Caribbean cruise on Oasis. First, I will start by saying that at the time, I was 21 and he was 22. I was a full-time college student working very minimally on campus, and he was working full-time, but basically, we didn't have a whole lot of money. So you could say an Oasis of the Seas vacation for eight days was pretty ambitious for our age and um, we were bound and determined to do it, so we booked an interior cabin and we actually paid about $2,000 for that cabin, which for us was a lot of money and we couldn't even like get a balcony because they were just too expensive. We chipped away at paying it off over a few months, um, several months actually, and we had the option of tacking on gratuity to that total, but uh, gratuity was about $200 extra and we ultimately decided just to pay for it on the cruise because we didn't have that extra money at the time. We were trying to book flights, book the cruise itself, pay for the hotel the night before the cruise. There was just a lot that we were paying for and gratuities were just not not in the plan at the moment. So we said, it's fine, we're just gonna pay them on board the ship. So we didn't tack that on. And then um, the other stuff we didn't pay for was any excursions and we didn't purchase any drink plans. Basically bare bones, like just getting on the ship is what we paid for. We paid to sleep on the ship <laughs> and that was, that was it. We each brought a couple hundred dollars in spending money with us on the ship. I brought about 200, he brought, brought about 300. And the first thing that we did when we got on the ship was we went to the bar and we each purchased a blue Hawaiian cocktail and they were $13 a piece plus the tip. So about 14 a piece put together, that's 30, almost $30, like $28 for two drinks. And that is when we realized that this was gonna be way more expensive than we had planned. And Brandon actually was going to be paying for whatever our balance was at the end of the cruise with a paycheck that would be coming in the day before we had to get off the ship. So he wasn't afraid you know, that we wouldn't have enough money, it was just that we were a little bit taken aback by how expensive this was to just like buy a drink outright. So the woman next to us at the bar, she turns around and she says, hey, you know, my husband and I have been cruising for years and something that we do is we share a drink package. And we were both like, wait, what? You can do that? Which technically you are not supposed to do this and I don't really condone doing it. But um, yeah, she told us basically that one person could buy a deluxe drink package and could go up to the bar, get a drink, come back, give their drink to whoever they were with and then go get another drink. So, yeah, she said that there was never any questions asked and they had been doing this for years. Royal Caribbean has since taken precaution against this and you now have to purchase a drink package. Um, and if you're in a cabin, I think, with someone that is getting a deluxe package, you have to get one as well. Like, they have this whole new policy now with the drink plan because of this. And we saw a lot of people using this loophole when we were on board the ship. 
Um, but yeah, she highly suggested that we do that. So we said, okay, you know, um, Brandon can buy the drink package and I'll just share it and he can go get me drinks whenever and we'll save half the money. So he bought a deluxe drink package for $400. Everything was going great. We were over the moon excited that we could have a drink package and he said, yeah, like I'll just pay for it with the paycheck I'm getting at the end of the cruise and it'll be completely fine. Everything went well until Wednesday. And Wednesday was our day in St. Thomas. So we were going to get off the ship and Brandon decided to get a bottle of water. So he went up to the bar and tried to use his card and they tell him that it's inactive. And he starts to ask the bartender, you know, what's going on with it, do you know? And the bartender said, I can't tell, it just says that it's turned off and I suggest you go to guest services. It's probably just an error on the account and they'll get it back up and running for you. And so we didn't want to worry about it right then. We got off and went into St. Thomas and when we got back onto the ship later, uh, we went back to go get ready for dinner and Brandon said, I'm gonna go to guest services now and get this sorted out so that we can go out tonight and get drinks and you know, whatever. Cause we couldn't use our cards. Like they were completely turned off. For some reason we could still get on and off the ship. They like let us do that. But yeah, we couldn't make any purchases on board. He goes down to guest services and he's gone for about an hour and a half, which is a really long time um, to be in line at guest services. But he finally comes back upstairs and he was like, um, so they told me that we have hit our threshold on our account. Now, let me explain. <laughs> there are two types of accounts that you can get on Royal Caribbean's cruises. You can have a cash account and you can have a credit account. The cash account is what it sounds like. You get your cash, you have your cash, and that's what you pay with at the end of your cruise. You go up to guest services on the second to last night, or the second to last day, I should say, and you pay off your balance before you depart the next morning. Simple. Um, but can be a hassle because you have to wait in line and you know deal with all of that. Credit accounts are a little bit more convenient. So basically you put a card on file and they're going to charge to your card on the last day of the cruise and that money's going to get taken off automatically and you can disembark from the ship without having to deal with getting in the guest services line unless you have some weird error on your account. But that's basically the convenience factor of the credit account. Now, as you're guessing, because Brandon wasn't getting paid until the end of the cruise, he didn't have that much money in his checking account at the time, so we didn't put a card on file because it wasn't gonna cover anything anyway. And he didn't want them to run the card and have something get messed up, like have his bank flag it or something, like it's too much of a risk. So we went with the cash account when we signed up um, and did our early onboarding online. So apparently if you have a cash account, there is a $500 spending limit. And we didn't know this. <laughs> um, we just, we didn't know. And we probably wouldn't have known had we not purchased a drink package, which was $400. So that $400 went onto our account. We proceeded to buy a couple of souvenirs on board the ship. We also were, uh, you know, putting tips on drinks and gratuity was getting tacked on every day because we didn't prepay it. So it was $12 per person per day was getting put on. So $24 was getting tacked on for gratuity. So that's a lot of like money that's coming into that account all at once. And we had hit $500 owed. So they shut the cards off. <laughs> I said, you know, what are we gonna do? And he said, well, the lady said that I can go and I can pay off part of the account to get us under 500 and we just have to keep it under 500 and we have to really just watch what we're spending. And I said, okay, that sounds doable. So he takes 200 of his spending money and he goes down and waits another hour and a half in line and pays off part of the account to get us down to, I think right around $300 that we owed. And they said it might take a little bit for it to go, you know, register on the account and then our passes should turn back on. And we were like, great. So the rest of the night, we didn't really bother to try the cards. I think we did once and they were like, yeah, these are inactive. So we were like, okay, it just hasn't applied to the account yet. The next day was a C day and we 100% wanted our cards to work this day because we were gonna be by the pool all day and we wanted to be able to make use of this drink package that was $400. The next morning we go and we check the account and it's still inactive. The card is not working. 
So Brandon goes back to get services for another hour and a half. And I'm not joking, I'm not exaggerating. That is literally how long it was taking to get through that line at any hour of the day. In the morning, the evening, mid-afternoon, didn't matter at all. It was always just packed. And so he gets up to the front of the line. He has a different person than the day before and he explains to them the situation. He said, we maxed out our account. I have put money down. I was told that would reactivate the cards and they're not reactivated. They look up the account and they say to him, yeah, you have a cash account. You need to pay off all $500 before we can reactivate your card. And he tries to tell them, you know, this is not what I was told. And they did. They basically were like, we don't care. This is the policy, you were misinformed. We're sorry about that, but this is what you gotta do if you want your card to be reactivated. We don't have enough cash at this point to activate the cards. They tell Brandon, you know, what you can do is you can actually put a card on file right now and that should clear everything up. And he tells them, you know, the money isn't gonna be there till tomorrow. I don't really think that it's gonna run the card. I don't think there's enough money on there. And they were like, well, why don't we just try it? So he's like, you know what, whatever, gives them his card and they try it and it gets declined. And they're like, yeah, that didn't work. And they were like, well, maybe your bank is declining it. Do you want to call them? They're like asking us and we're like, no, like we know the money's not there. So he said, I'll be back tomorrow to just pay it off in cash. And they're like, okay, absolutely, whatever. And they let us go. So we go all Thursday with no drink package, no ability to spend on board. It was, f obviously we're on vacation. Like this is like a first world problem. Oh, I can't get my drinks, I can't get this. But it was so expensive of a vacation. Like, I just wanted to be able to enjoy it. And I was just stressing, stressed out to the max. Friday morning, we were in St. Martin. Brandon says, I'm gonna just settle this this morning. So he goes down before we get off the ship and he, goes to the ATM and he withdraws the money that we owe on the account using the paycheck that has gone into his checking account and it was there, no issue, whatever. He withdraws the money. He goes up to guest services and gets up there and tells them what he wants to do and they look us up and they say, well, your account's already settled. And he was like, what do you mean it's already settled? And they said, well, you have a card on file. And he's like, uh, no, we have a cash account. You guys tried my card yesterday just to see if it would work, but I didn't switch to a credit account. And they were like, well, because we took your card and tried it, like that automatically switched you to a credit account. And Brandon was like, well, I don't really want to have a credit account. And this is why, because we now have 400 some odd dollars that he's holding in his hand in cash. Then we have another 400 that's been taken off of his debit card. So now he has cash in his hand and almost nothing on his card. You might be thinking, Kaylee, what's the big deal? Because your account's settled, why do you care? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. We had to pay to check our baggage at the airport. They did not take cash for that. It had to be on a card. We also had to have $200 in our account for our rental car that we were getting in Fort Lauderdale because we were gonna be driving to West Palm Beach to fly out because it was a lot cheaper. So we had decided to get a rental car for the day and you need $200 as a hold on your account. Guess what? Now we don't have that because Royal Caribbean has withdrawn it without our knowledge. <laughs> so Brandon's like, uh, well, can you cancel that transaction and I will pay you in cash right here. And they said, no, once you have gone over to credit, you can't go back to a cash account. <laughs> it was not a good situation whatsoever. So we were very angry and um, we got off the ship and had to cancel our rental car. We ended up taking an Uber, which we had just had enough money for. That is, in a nutshell, what happened to us. And now I'm gonna get into some of the things that we learned based on this experience. The first thing that we learned is prepay for everything. Prepay your drinks, prepay excursions, prepay your gratuity, everything that you can prepay before you go on your cruise, please do it because it is gonna save you so much in the long run. You're gonna be way less stressed. Everything is just gonna go a lot smoother. We did this on our enchantment cruise the following year and we were fine. We still had a cash account, but we knew the threshold and we knew that we had prepaid everything. So those extra charges weren't going on there and you're just so much more stress-free. So prepay everything. The second thing is never 
travel without extra emergency money. You have your spending money, but always brings extra because you never know when you're gonna need it. And for us, it was like we would have needed the extra for our rental car. Um, other things that can happen, you could miss the boat at port and you have to somehow pay your way off the island to get to the next port or uh, to fly home. You just never know when you might need a few extra hundred dollars. So always set aside extra emergency money when you're on vacation. Number three is do full research on the cruise line's policies because I'm sure in fine print somewhere there was something about the threshold of $500 on the cash account and guess what? We didn't read anything thoroughly, so we didn't know. And had we known, we would have never bought the drink package because we would have known, oh, well, we're gonna hit $500. Or if we had bought the drink package, we would have watched that account and made sure we kept it under 500 and never let it hit 500. So it's just having that knowledge of their policies ahead of time will save you from a lot of unpleasant surprises when you're on vacation and supposed to be relaxing. Number four is double check everything you're being told on board the ship. If a crew member tells you something, double check with someone else. Brandon was told one thing at guest services, the next day they told him something different, and the next day they told him something totally different as well. You have to double check with people because sometimes the crew members, you know, maybe they're new or maybe they're just not informed. Maybe they've never dealt with a certain situation and they don't know how to answer it. You never know if you're getting inaccurate info and it could screw you over in the long run. So always double check everything, which goes back kind of to the policy thing as well. My final bit of advice is simply don't take cruises you can't afford. We bet off way more than we could chew with Oasis. It was our first vacation we planned together and we just went all out and we thought that that was gonna be like the ultimate vacation and it ended up not being as great because we couldn't really afford it. We couldn't afford to do all the cool stuff that comes along with cruising and it definitely came back to bite us in the long run. The following year, we took a shorter cruise, we prepaid everything because we could afford it. We had a fabulous time. It was so stress-free, it was amazing. I think the outcome ends up being better. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys learned some interesting stuff. Um, and if you have ever made any rookie mistakes on a cruise or on vacation, write them down in the comments below. It's definitely helpful for first time cruisers and people that are doing research and looking into this type of stuff um, to know ahead of time you know what precautions to take if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you like the channel make sure you subscribe and click the bell to know when i upload here there's lots of upcoming content in the next like two or three months i have a whole calendar built out for all the way till may so uh, there will be tons of content here and uh, thank you guys so much for those who are here who have supported the channel and uh, i will see you all in the next video Bye.